morning and welcome to Beijing Stoke Baptist. Hi. I'm Laura uh, and I sometimes play in the worship band and this is Elise and we would like to welcome you to church this morning. If you're joining online or whether you're in the building, we pray that you have a really good service, that you're able to uh, hear from God, that you're encouraged and blessed and that you're able to encourage everybody else around you. Uh, I'd just like to read from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for he issued his command and they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Let's joyfully worship the Lord this morning as we sing praise his name. Sing our first worship song, as Laura said, Oh, praise the name.
the earth rejoice, oh the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at this morning we welcome you in this place we welcome your presence Jesus Holy Spirit thank you that you are dwelling here among us now and we say have your way God have your way in this place this morning in Jesus name we pray amen please be seated good morning my name is Robin and I'm recording this on the 28th of September. It's my pleasure to lead us in our prayers this morning. So let's come before God and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we live in troubled and uncertain times. 
Around us we see a fear and panic. So help us not to adopt the standards of this world, but to put our trust and confidence in you, our Creator. We know that you love us with an overwhelming generosity and you want the best for us, even in the midst of life's challenges. When we feel anxious about a situation or a challenge before us, we know that your love will uplift us and shift our perspective. We know that our circumstances may not immediately change, but our outlook and response certainly will. And your word in Romans 5, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope and glory of God. So, Heavenly Father, Jesus' death has paid the price and forgiven our sins. By your grace, forgive us and bless us, despite the fact that we fall short of your righteous standards. Show your favour towards us, even though we are completely unworthy of it and have not earned it. We praise and thank you that your grace and mercy is available to all of us as a free gift, although sometimes we have difficulty accepting it. Father, we rejoice that your grace is given generously to all believers and covers us, strengthens and forgives us. Father God, we don't have to earn, work for or buy your grace. It is given without restriction to every believer who accepts Jesus Christ. When we are discouraged or needing encouragement to move forward, we can obtain your grace to remain uplifted and reminded that you are with us and for us. God, your grace never runs out and is sufficient more than enough. Your grace covers all our failings, shortcomings, flaws and sins. So help us to accept the, abun the abundance of your grace and to realise that we don't need anything more. Father, when we make a wrong turn or need to be redirected, your grace invites us to do so without condemnation. Each new day provides a new opportunity for us to start again, having learned the lessons from yesterday. We invite you to allow your grace and mercy to guide and direct us forward as we put our trust in you. Your grace allows us to be forgiven and to walk in your victory. Help us to receive your grace every day and to show grace to others. Help us to move forward with assurance, boldness and courage, accepting your grace and receiving the free gift of all your forgiving love that is available to us all. Amen. Is there, if we've got children here, I need some help this morning. If we've got some children here, you just come up here and come and see. Let, let me see you. Right. Okay. Oh, thank you, Sammy. Come on out here. Come and see. Come and see. Right. Do you want to sit on the edge of the stage? Look, you can park there. Look, there's some plenty of room. You can just sit down over here. I'll sit here. Hi. Good to see you. Welcome. Find a seat. Anywhere do you want to sit? Where would you like to sit? You're going to come and sit over here? Do you want to come over here? Come over here. Come and sit here. Come on, there you go, buddy. Is it a bit high for you? Oh, no, you jumped up there. Fine. Fantastic. Right, here's the question. Here's the question I want to ask you this morning. You're not at home, are you, at the moment? Yeah. Why? Why aren't you at home? Why? Because we're here. Because you're here. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm really pleased you're here. So welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome. 
What's your name? Uh, David. David Mikal. You're David. Do you know what my name is? Do you know what my name is? My name's David. You're David. And I'm David. How does that, how does that work? Oh, I don't, I, oh my, I mean, you stand up. If you stand up there, look, at, look how tall I am and look how tall you are. How, you can see, you can see that. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Happy days. Right, so um, 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 you're here. So let's just pretend, let's pretend that I went to your house whilst you're here. Nobody's in your house and I went into your house. Okay. What signs would there be? What would evidence would there be that you live there? So I want to know, what could I see that would say, ah, you live there? Okay, right, okay. So what evidence? Johanna, so if I went to your house now, okay, so what would make me say, oh, Hannah lives here? What would be there, do you think? What do you think? Who? Who? The house. Well, the house would be there, wouldn't it? Which is great. We need to have a house. But if you go into your house, what things would be there? What do you own in your house? What's there that's yours? Have you got any toys? Yeah? So would I know that you live there because of those toys? You say, yes, Dave. That's the best thing. <laughs> Luke! How you doing, buddy? Yeah! Come on! All right, bye, Hannah. Okay. Are you going to stand up? Can you, Luke, can you stand up on the stage? Stand up there. That's it. You all right, mate? All right, turn around then. Give us a big twirl. All the way around. All the way around. All the way around. And then wave to everybody. Yee! It's great to have you back, Luke. It's good to see you. Now, if, you, if I went in your house, how would I know that you live there? Probably right, absolutely. Absolutely. What would I know? Who? Photographs. There's photographs of you there, yeah? Okay. How would I know that you live in your house? Do you keep anything there? Have you got, have you got all your clothes on that you own? You have? Oh, wow. Nice clothes, though. How else would I know that you're there? This is your house. We've got photos. We've got toys. You've got some books with your name in it? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. How would we know that you're there? It's your house. Any idea? What other stuff is there of yours? Smelly socks. <laughs> Do you have smelly socks? Unbelievable. What stuff is there? What stuff is there? You've left your phone at home. Have you? Oh, good man. Yeah, I bring mine with me. I, I don't leave it. I, just in case my dog eats it. <laughs> David, ha, what stuff's at home? I of, have, have you really? Yeah, I have books too. Fantastic! Absolutely brilliant. I got any idea? Stuff. I have, I have books at my school. You got books at school. Have you got books at home as well? Yeah, good man. Signs of your house. If I went into your house, how would I know that you live there? What stuff? You got a phone? What stuff? No ideas. Right, Bruce has been, Bruce is my dog, and he's been in here, this church. Can you go out and find some signs that he's been here? Go out and check out, see if you can find some stuff that tells you that Bruce has been here. Can you go and find some things? Have a look around on the floor and see if you can find anything that reminds you that, that he... You go this way. If you go up here, look for things that belong to Bruce. Ah, well done. We've got a ball. Here's a ball. So far. Signs that Bruce has been here. Can you have a look around? What have you got, Hannah? What have you got? Oh, come on. If you find it, there should be four signs. Four signs that Bruce has been here. There we go. A chewy... That's been chewed. It probably has been chewed, actually. Yeah. I got another one. One more. You didn't find anything over there. Oh, you got a piece of paper? I don't think that's his. Is everybody? I think this is all we've got. So if you come and sit down, then 
we found them all. Well done. Brilliant. So check it out. This, is, this is, belongs to Bruce. So Bruce has been here. Yeah, I have a Brucey toy. Would you like a Brucey chort toy? It's been chewed. Okay. Oh, he squeaks, doesn't he? Isn't that fantastic? Well, there's... And another one. Where was that one? Oh. <laughs> and he's left stuff. He leaves little presents all over the place, does Bruce. How about that? He's at home at the moment, and he's probably, knowing Bruce, lying on my bed, I bet. I bet he is. I bet he is. So, we've got signs, haven't we? Bruce has left us clues that he's been here. You've left clues, because in your house there is evidence that you've, you've been there. I know you can do that. Bruce does that. Have you you've not met Bruce yet? You'll meet him, David, I tell you. He's great. What about signs that God is here? How We know that Bruce is here because we can see all the stuff he's left. We know that you've been in your house because you leave things in your house. How do we know that God is here? Yeah, go for it. We've got a cross. Fantastic. We've got a cross. What does the cross do? It reminds us of God's love. So God is with us because of what he did on the cross. Anything else that can remind us of why God is here? There's a picture over there that tells us of God's love. Yeah? Go on, David. Yeah, but that's Bruce's toy. And no, we've changed the subject now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. That's not a problem. Other signs. Go on. Holy Spirit, we've got Holy Spirit words up there. What about amongst all these people? How do we know that God is here? Look at all these people here. Do you think these people can help us to see God? How's that then, do you think? How do you think that they help us to see that God is here? What do you think? Yeah? Yeah? Go on. What do they do to each other? Are they nasty to each other? They're kind to each other. They, go on. Um, that they, pray they pray together. We know God's with us because we talk to him and we pray to him, just like Robin did in our prayers just now. And just as you say, we are kind to each other. We love one another. Oh, poor dog. Oh, oh he's got back to the other one. And this is the thing. The Bible says this in John's Gospel. It says, by this you will know that you all are my disciples if you love one another. And that's what we're meant to do. So one of the signs that you live in your house is the stuff you've left. One of the signs that Bruce has been here is all the toys he's left. And one of the signs that God gives us that we have the presence of God with us is the fact that in my home. You've got loads of toys in your home. You are very, very blessed, David, aren't you? Yeah, my grandma died at home. There's a lot of stuff I need to know about your home. You can chat to me about that. Yeah. It seems that you're going to tell me a lot, and, yeah, it, and it'll be very helpful, I think. Yeah. I have, I'm buying Legos. You've got Lego? Yeah. Oh, I'm coming around your house. Legos. Yeah? Books. Yeah? Toys uh, and books. Car. You've got cars. Oh, my and word. Some Just talk amongst yourselves. David and I are having a chat. <laughs> and some guns. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, fair enough. So, all I want you to know is that you leave signs that where you are with the stuff that you leave. Like Bruce leaves signs that he's been here. But God leaves signs with us as well to remind us that he is with us. And one of the best ways that he shows us, not only in the signs that we see around us in here, but in the people who love one another. Is that okay? Right, so what I want you to do, you can go off to a little group now. Is there somebody going to help out outside? Sue's going. Is there anybody else helping you, Sue? If, if, Sue, is, if Sue is on her own, she would lead somebody to support her for the time of my message, which may be 15 minutes. And then you'll come. Then you're coming back for communion. Is that all right? Will you come back in a minute and have communion with me? Right. Can I have Bruce's toys? And if you follow Sue over there, that'd be brilliant. Well done. And I'll see you in about 15 minutes. You're going to go to the group. Cheers, mate. I'm going to do 
Okay, fair enough. So off you go then, you go that way. See where they've all gone? Your mum and dad's over there? Well, go out that way. Daddy will show you. That's cool. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah. Harvest dinner next week. We've got a harvest dinner. If you, um, if you have not signed up, is there a sign-up? St- yeah. Andy's got a sign-up sheet. So if you've not signed up, we are doing our harvest dinner next week. For those people at home who are watching who haven't joined us today, come and eat with us. It would be great to see you. We will make sure everything is well spaced out. But um, harvest, get together, fellowship. But you need to sign up. Otherwise, there won't be enough food. I think there will be, but I, th- I think Sally's really good at this. But please, can you, before you go home today, could you sign up to make sure that you're um, signed in for our harvest supper? Well, it's not supper, it's lunch. Do you know what we're having yet? Roast pork. And hopefully crispy roast potatoes. Crispy roast potatoes. And I'll probably something about apple pie. Come on. Custard and ice cream on the apple pie. Quickly, I've got 15 minutes because I told the kids it was going to be 15 minutes. It was really exciting this morning. I had a message appear on my computer um, as I was working downstairs. um, And the message was from a network of people who live around where I live. And the message was... Sainsbury's have got petrol. It was exciting. I tell you, the, I tell you, my heart started to race as I got up, went upstairs, woke up Ben, because Ben's car's got no fuel in it. Woke up Ben and I said, Ben, Ben, get down to Sainsbury's. Come on, they've got fuel and there's no queues. And then I come downstairs and I'm thinking to myself, Carol's car's got three quarters of a tank. Mine's got about a third of a tank. Maybe I should top up. So... I still have my pyjamas on. I put Crocs on my feet with my jammies on and I drove to Sainsbury's and I filled my car. 60 quid to fill my car up. So my car's full. And then when I got back, surprise above all surprises, Ben was still in bed. So I had to rush upstairs again and say, Ben, Ben, come on. I think I said it a little bit more angst than that because uh, I just f- felt that the gentle way I'd started his day was, uh, was not as effective as it could have been. And then Ben gets up, throws some clothes on, off he goes, and then he goes and fills up his car. So, and then I'm texting people messages. There's petrol at Sainsbury's. It's time to fill up. That was the call this morning. But the thing about it is, which is quite exciting, is that it's time to fill up. Today is time to fill up. It's time to gather together with God's people. It's time to bring worship to God. It's time to receive from him all that he has for us because it's time to fill up. I think it was D.L. Moody. He was an evangelist preacher um, back a couple of centuries ago in America. And um, he talked to, he was, he, he was known as being one who was always telling people, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And one person questioned him one day and said, why do you keep talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit? And D.L. Moody just says, well, the truth of the matter is we leak. And what happens is we leak out. If we're not constantly being filled with the presence of God, knowing that God is with us and in us and empowering us, then what happens is we either leak, it leaches out, or it dries up because we're giving out all of the time. This is what it says in uh, Matthew chapter 5. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And this is the call upon each and every one of us, that we're not to be people who are half empty or running on the fumes. We're called to be a people who are filled and constantly filled. This is the sign that we have pretty much everywhere at the moment. Well, I don't know if you remember. So at the moment, getting fuel, people are queuing 
And there was some algorithm given or something. They said, you know, I don't know, it was middle of last week. They said, we will have eight days of this. And after eight days of it, then we were in a, be in a place where everybody's cars are full and everybody's just working through the fuel that they've got and, and we'll be back to normal. I hope that's going to be the way it is. But So there's queuing for fuel. I don't know if you remember <laughs> when we had to queue before we could go into Sainsbury's or Tesco's. And we were being cautious, weren't we? We were being very careful because of COVID and we were trying to stay separated and distanced from one another. And the way that the shops did it was they made us queue, queuing for food in the 21st century. How bonkers was that? And this over here, I don't know if you can recognize, this here is the entrance as you come into church here. And this is a Tuesday. And this is people queuing to come and to receive from us as we give out food through our food hub. And it's brilliant, isn't it? People queue. If you're hungry, if you want fuel, you'll queue for it. If you want food, you'll queue for it. I long for the day when people are queued up outside of churches. Because what is being delivered and brought into people's lives in places like this is so desired. The people come to a point at the end of the week and they're saying, do you know what, I'm, I'm empty. I need to be filled. I need to be in the presence of, of God's people. I need to bring my worship. I need to have an encounter with God. And this is a place where all of those things can happen. I love what uh, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3. He says this, he says, a prayer, this is a prayer for the Ephesians. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. I love the fact that when Paul talks about God ministering to us, coming to us, he says, our God is a God of abundance. There is no limitation. There's no restriction. I, I popped into Sainsbury's yesterday to see if I could get some fuel yesterday. And there's a guy stood with a barrier across where the petrol station is and said, you know, the tanker hasn't turned up. That's never going to be the, ca the case with our God. Our God always turns up. He is always there, always willing to fill us resource us, empower us. And Paul says this, he's, he's, he's going to strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. This isn't about just being topped up. This is about an inhabitation. He's going to take up residence within you and fill you from the inside. He may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love Oh, that's gone. That's all right. <laughs> May have power together with all the Lord's people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ is and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may... Can you read those two words to me? Be read it again. Be Say it louder. Be that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is the truth. God wants to fill us. He doesn't want us to be just enough in reserve. He wants us to know that we are filled to overflowing. I think the person in front of me's tank was quite full when it came to um, them filling up today at Sainsbury's. I knew it was quite full because it was actually dripping down the wing of the car onto the tire. You can't get overfilled with God. You can't get overfilled with God. His desire is always to fill us. And there's two ways of being filled up. Here's the, uh, the um, call, first of all, is there self-service. The self-service side of things says, this is down to you. There's something you can do to stay filled. And I'm just going to ask a few questions. Uh, how do you see yourself being filled? How do you get filled? If somebody said to you, how do you get filled with God? How do you stay full of the presence of God? What's your response? Anybody got an answer? 
Okay, right, I'm going to go around with hands. This is like school, isn't it? Yeah, if you've got an answer, just raise your hand. Okay, so if you've got an answer, I'm going to go right to the back to James. Yes, sir. Reading God's Word. Okay, I can fill up by receiving God's Word. Read God's Word. Anybody else got an out? Okay, this is a marriage thing going on here. Are you going to better him? Singing worship songs in the shower. Singing worship. Just positioning yourself to be a worshipper as we give praise to God, praise and worship to God, then, yeah, there's an encounter opportunity. Anybody else? We've got Bibles and we've got worship. Debbie? Listen to his word. Listen to his word. Listen to his word being read. Absolutely. That's good. Anything else? Go on. Spend time alone with God. We used to call it quiet time. Being still in God's presence, acknowledging God, not just fitting him into times that were together, just saying, do you know, I'm going to segregate this time and this is going to be my God slot time. I'm going to be in your presence. That's good. Good thing to do. Anything else? Mark? That's a good thing. If you've got an app or something or you've been able to play. Do you remember CDs? Oh, hang about. What about tapes? (laughs) Tape player in a car. Yeah, I've been looking at caravans. I don't know what's happening in my life, but I'm looking at caravans at the moment. And I was looking at caravans. And when they take photographs of the inside of caravan, showing you what the layout is of the caravan, occasionally they show you a picture, because, uh, and it's a car stereo. And it's almost to say, you know, this, this caravan's got, you know, a music system in it. And it's a tape player. That's probably because I'm looking at caravans that are about, 15, 16, 17 years old, and uh, they've got, it's got JVC tape player, not even a CD player, it's a tape player. Listen to the word, yeah, absolutely. Anything else we can do? Go for it. Asking God, yeah, Lord, would you come? Fill me, fill me. Any other points? I'm going to go back to James again because nobody else is coming. Go. Pray constantly. Come on. These are some thoughts that I've had. I thought, you know, get into the Word. Get into the Bible. Find ourselves amongst fellowship. The book of Hebrews reminds us we should not neglect meeting together. Being together helps us to be filled because you get built up. Serve. That's a key thing, isn't it? Because once God has gifted you and anointed you, you need an out place to go. And in serving, we find that we get filled as we gave out we get back and then there's that side of things which is obedience so that these are things that I can do if the word of God says do it then I should do it and the thing is the more that I find myself being obedient the more aware I am of the presence and my closeness to the Lord it's just the way that it is when God says go I don't say no simple as that well that's that's self-service these are the things that we can do but One of the things that I recognized, which was a little bit interesting when I went to uh, America for the first time, and in New Jersey, in New Jersey, you're not allowed to fill your car up yourself. Somebody else, a garage forecourt attendant, has to put the gas in your car. And you go there to fill up with fuel, and the first time I did it, you get out of the car, and you go around, and they go, whoa, you're not allowed to do that. And so you have a full service. It's not like that across the whole of the States, but it was in New Jersey at that time. And you have to wait for somebody else to do it for you. And this is one of the things that you've got to take on board, and and which I love about the Lord and how we spend time in his presence. This is what Paul says in Ephesians, and that you may know that you have this knowledge that surpasses all knowledge, this know this love that surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, that you may be filled. And it sounds like when Paul is writing this, this is something that God wants to do to you. He wants to fill you. And I think it's that being still, waiting upon the Lord. Lord, will you, I'm, I can do nothing. And sometimes when we put our hands up and say, Lord, I can't do anything here, but I need you. Will you come and meet with me? And I recognize that times when God has come and met with me and I've done nothing, but it's his heart and his desire is to come and fill. So here's a question then. Here's a question. What do you see are the, oh, hang about. Where did that come from? That's that one. Next one. 
You have to move it on, James. It's not working. There you go. So we've talked about how to be filled, some things that we can do to help being filled, also position on ourselves for God to fill us because his desire is to fill us. What about signs of emptiness? How do I know when things are running out? I remember a time when uh, we were changing our car. We were living in Bexhill and I was driving through uh, um, a place called Pevensey Bay. And as I was driving through Pevensey Bay, my car stopped. And it just, just stopped. And I'm thinking to myself, what's going on? And I'm looking at the fuel gauge, and the fuel gauge is saying that there's half a tank of fuel, but it stopped. And then this was one of the signs that I needed to take on board that the electrics of the car were not working properly. Although it said I had half, it actually meant I had nothing. And I ran out of fuel. And it's a real weird thing when you've got no fuel in your car. And you've also got no way of obtaining fuel. And you don't know who to call who might have a jerry can or something. And I, the story goes on. But it coughed and it spluttered and then it stopped. How do you know when you're getting empty? Any ideas? How do you know when you're not filled with the presence of God? Ali's going to start us off. If you get, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's about the fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? Sometimes when we find ourselves empty of the presence of God, some of those fruit just aren't growing and we're not seeing them. So you get, yeah, you can lose your temper. Any other signs? How do we know? How do we know? Or don't we know? Give us an idea. How do you, let's, let's, let's be personal. When you know you're empty, what shows up? Go on then. Um, you lose desire to kind of like read your Bible, pray, like the desire for God's things. Yeah, like you, yeah, absolutely. You start to lose a desire to spend time with God. Absolutely. Darshan, what were you saying? Sometimes um, I've been like crying and for no reason. Yeah. Yes. So there's an emotional side. Sometimes God just speaks into our emotions and makes us aware that we need filling up. We need filling up. Anybody else? How else do you know? Come on, right there. Go for it. When you lack faith in yourself and empty Yeah, you start doubting things. And ungodly thoughts start filling your head. And you start to think of things that, do you know, that's not of Jesus. Absolutely. So when we start to serve out of our own ability rather than trusting in God's resources and his empowering. Have you ever experienced any of this? Put your hand up if you've ever experienced the state of emptiness. You feel, okay, praise God. We are all a people who need to be filled. And we know what it feels like to be empty and my encouragement today is that you would pursue the desire of being filled. This is what Jesus says in John 7. He says, whoever believes in me, do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Okay. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, rivers of living water will flow out of them. And I believe this river that flows out of us as believers is because we have positioned ourselves to be filled. So the invitation as we come to the Lord's table today is will you come and be filled with Jesus himself? In a moment when we share the bread and the wine, we have these words from the book of Corinthians that remind us that the bread is his body broken and the wine is his blood being shed. And when we take that into ourselves, and here is my biological analogy that falls short in a massive way. You see, if I had Weetabix for breakfast, as I eat the Weetabix, 
It goes down into my digestive system and it gets mixed up with all sorts of stuff that's going on and it gets broken down. And as I've eaten the Weetabix and it's being broken down, it's then particles, all the nutrients and all the good stuff in the Weetabix then starts to move into my blood. And because it's in my blood, if I was to get a cut on my finger, there's Weetabix coming out. It is, isn't it? Because the blood is made up of the constitutional bits and pieces that have been digested of the Weetabix. You take it in and digest it and then it becomes part of you. I am a Weetabix. But as we come to the Lord's table, we take in the bread and we take the cup and we take it into ourselves and we take it in and we digest. And what we are saying is fill me, Jesus. So that in every circumstance and every situation, if I were to be cut, I would bleed Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit that would come out because I have fed and been fulfilled and satisfied by him. In a time at this moment where things seem to be running out, know that our God is willing to fill us up. So Andy, do you want to tell the young people to come on in? Let's, let's um, share this meal together. Let's spend some time around the Lord's table. And uh, that's brilliant. Thank you. As we uh, prepare ourselves to come to this table, our team will lead us in worship. Shall we stand together as we sing our next song and prepare to take communion together? Once again, I look upon the cross. 
He's received from the Lord what he's also passing on to us. That the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Allow me to lead you in a prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that before us we have these natural, normal elements of bread and juice. But I thank you, Lord, that as we act upon your word, their relevance and their importance to us is transformed. That in eating this bread and drinking this cup, we are brought to that place of remembrance of your love for us. The fact that you, the perfect one, was willing to come, to live that perfect life, to show us an example of what it means to be in constant communion with our Heavenly Father that you would go to the cross and there pay the debt for all of our sin. We thank you, Lord, that this morning we can remember your amazing love with these elements, that we can be refilled and refueled, that we would indeed go from this place empowered to be Christ wherever we find ourselves. So we come with thanksgiving. Thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for your death. But also thank you, Lord, that we have been able to celebrate a mighty resurrection because you are our living God with us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to, when you're ready, come down the centre aisle. I'd like to serve you with the bread. And then you can go off to the right if you're a right-hand sitter. Or the left, or it's the other way around for you, isn't it? You can go off to the right or to the left. And um, I'm just going to ask whether I could have somebody who would... Uh, Tanya, come, could you do my, my right-hand side? That would be good. Joe, would you come out and do my left-hand side, please? It's heavy. Are you all right? So, Joe, you just stand there. Well done, buddy. Thank you. Brilliant. So when you come down, just come down. I'll serve you bread. And uh, children, if you're um, not at a point of taking the bread and the wine, which you're very welcome to do here, if you're not, then what we have here is some grapes. It's not wine yet. So come and help yourself to a grave. Or anybody else, if you feel at this moment in time that it's not right for you to partake in this meal, then come and take a grape. And know that you are involved because this is a family feast. This was never a religious thing to do. You, when Jesus was meeting with his disciples, they just had dinner together. And then he shared this feast with them. So it's a normal and natural thing to do that we would share in this meal together and everybody is involved. So when you feel ready, do come down the front and share in the bread and the wine. I have a bread. I want a I haven't got one. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ. Thank you. 
You can have a grape, good man, body of Christ, broken for you. That's nice. Body of Christ, broken for you. 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 Body of Christ, broken for you, Jerry. Body of Christ, broken for you, David. Body of Christ, broken for you. 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 Okay. Body of Christ, broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you, Tracy. Body of Christ broken for you, Andy. Body of Christ broken for you, Beryl. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you, Andy. Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you, Tony. Body of Christ broken for you, Debbie. I'm going to go home. I can go home. If you like. Body of Christ broken for you. 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 broken for you. Well done. Let me serve. I'll take that, mate. Okay. Um, can I serve you? Put that on top of there. That's fine. That's cool. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Tanya's just going to uh, serve anyone else who hasn't come up. If you didn't come and you would like to be served, then Tanya's on the ball. But let's continue in worship. Thank you. Together as we sing our last song, which uh, brings up so many um, amazing um, 
pictures, I suppose, of uh, what uh, God has done for us through Jesus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. encouraged by it. Um, I'd just like to pray for us uh, before we go. Uh, dear God, I thank you, Lord, for uh, the ability to meet uh, via uh, 
technology and in person. Father God, I just ask, Lord, that as we go into the coming week, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would empower us to serve you and to follow you. I pray, Lord, that um, we would be blessed, Father God, as we follow your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, if you're able to uh, stick around for coffee, it would be great to have a chat with you. Um, but we hope that you have a great week. See you next week. Bye.